Hi, my name's Paul and I'm one of the ministers here at TBC. One of the most fantastic freeing things about following Jesus is the way that he forgives me. Whenever I let him down, whenever I disobey him, whenever I hurt him, I know that his grace is bigger than my disgrace. I know that his forgiveness is unending. I don't understand it and heaven knows I don't deserve it, but he forgives me time after time after time. One of the hardest things about following Jesus is that he expects me to do the same thing. We're continuing our series that we've called Doing Life Together this week. And in it, we're exploring what kind of community God intends us to be within the church family and beyond that family as well. And this week, I want to think about that subject of forgiveness. And Anna is going to read to us from Colossians. Colossians 3, 12 to 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all of these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. In Serbia, there's a tiny village called Grade. It's right out in the sticks, way off the beaten track. And uh, for years, the villagers of Grade lived a really simple life. They had no electricity or running water. They had no television signal or even access to radio. And inevitably, over the years, people moved away, looking for a more modern or a more comfortable kind of life somewhere else in the country. And by the end of the 20th century, the village had shrunk until there were only two people left. Two quite elderly ladies called Ruzika Markovic and Lubika Pornovic. And both of them had lived in grade their entire lives. They'd been friends for decades. And now they were all that was left of that village. But there they decided to stay. And then in 2003, Markovic made a rude comment about one of Pornovic's cows. And the comment led to a disagreement and the two ladies stopped talking to each other. Three years later, they still weren't on speaking terms. The only two residents of the entire town, but they couldn't get past their falling out. In fact, they kind of became cult figures in Serbia and national newspapers used to talk to them and publish their insults about each other. All over a comment about a cow. This is a true story in which the names have not been changed. Any resemblance to church members is entirely coincidental. It's funny, but it's not really funny. In fact, it's, it's a touch uncomfortable because there's a little bit of Ruzika and Lubika inside each one of us. Jesus calls us to live in such a way that forgiveness is normal, where forgiving people is just what we do over and over again. Not after a sufficient delay to give us time to moan about the offence to our spouse, our best mate or our home group. Not after waiting for the other person to realise the seriousness of what they've done and make the first move and come and say sorry to me first. To just forgive 
as the Lord forgave you. And you know, I wish Paul had stopped halfway through when he was writing this. I wish he'd said, forgive one another, and then left it there. Because then I could get away with forgiving someone a little bit, but still gossiping about them if they happen to come up in conversation. Then I could get away with forgiving them for a while, but then taking it back again and nursing my resentment in private. Then I could get away with forgiving someone, sort of, but holding on to a detailed mental list of exactly how many times they've done this before and five other ways that they've annoyed me and just how much it all confirms what I'd always suspected about their character flaws. If only he'd just said, forgive one another. But forgive one another as the Lord forgave you. That's total. That's permanent. That's without record, without prejudice, and absolutely positively without discussing your faults with three other people before I get around to forgiving you. That's hard. That kind of forgiveness is an unnatural thing for fallen human beings like us. If somebody hurts me or humiliates me or lets me down or betrays my trust, my natural inner response is to get them back. Or failing that, it's to avoid them, to, to keep them at arm's length. It's, it's fight or flight, and, and that's human nature. To forgive goes completely against the grain. And so there's an internal battle always when you choose to forgive someone, because there's a part of you, it's what the Bible calls our sinful nature, there's a part of you which will continually push back against being a forgiving person. And that means that forgiveness is very often not a one-off thing. It's not like there's a button and you can push the button and then it's job done. You've forgiven that person forever and you don't need to think about it anymore. It's a bit more like you wake up every morning and you've got a decision. Am I going to walk in grace? Or am I going to walk in ungrace towards that person today? And yes, the initial decision is the biggest step, but it's usually not the final step. And so this is a hard thing. It's a thing that we need God's help with. And we all do, because you can't go through life without getting hurt. And you can't be part of, of any family, including a church family, without sometimes getting hurt. One of my heroes is a, a writer and preacher called Jeff Lucas, and he said, if you've been in church for more than a couple of months and nobody has upset or offended you yet, you're probably clinically dead. You can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond. It's a choice. Forgiveness is a choice, and so is unforgiveness. We can choose to forgive, or we can hold on to the hurt and nurture it. We can come back to it again and again and feed it. And because as good Christians we know we should forgive, and because most of us are quite good at self-deception, we can sometimes tell ourselves that we've forgiven someone, but still be quietly feeding and watering that unforgiveness. So here's a quick self-check. Is there someone that you've forgiven, but every time someone else talks about them, you find yourself with an overwhelming urge to subtly do them down, to point out their weaknesses and faults. Is there someone that you've forgiven, but somehow no matter what they say or do now, you find that you want to argue with them or object to them or tell them that they're wrong? 
Is there someone that you've forgiven, but in your daydreams you go over and over what they said or did, perhaps imagining how you wish you'd responded to put them back in their place? If so, it's just possible that you haven't forgiven them and released them as much as you think you have. I think to understand what forgiveness is, it can be quite helpful to first understand what forgiveness isn't. Forgiveness is not pretending that what happened didn't matter. That's actually called denial and it's a cheap substitute for grace and it leaves you no better off and it leaves the person you've forgiven no better off. Forgiveness doesn't mean that we don't hurt anymore. We might actually hurt for a long time, even after we've forgiven someone. And forgiveness doesn't mean pretending that that relationship hasn't changed. Very often, forgiveness can lead to reconciliation and a restored relationship, and it's wonderful when that happens, but not every single time. Sometimes the other person doesn't want to be reconciled, but you can still forgive them. Sometimes the wrong was serious enough that your relationship with that person has to change. Because forgiveness doesn't mean putting yourself back in a vulnerable position with an abuser or a bully. So what is forgiveness? First and foremost, it means choosing to think differently towards that person. Deciding to release the indignation, the anger and the inner desire for revenge. And that sometimes takes time. It means refusing to allow yourself to keep digging up the memory of the hurt and refusing to talk about the other person negatively because that's just another way of taking revenge. It means deciding to seek the best for that person. Can you pray for the person you're forgiving? Can you ask God to bless them? So forgiveness is a decision. It never just happens. It's a conscious, deliberate act and sometimes quite a painful one. <laughs> Did anyone ever tell you that following Jesus was easy? The Christian life is simple, but it's not easy. Now, I wonder if I can be blunt and honest with you for a few minutes. I've preached a lot on forgiveness, as you'd expect, because it's a big deal in the Bible. And I've told stories of amazing Christians who have learned to forgive people at whose hands they've suffered the most horrendous, painful things. The Vietnamese girl who forgave the soldiers who napalmed her village, killing her entire family and leaving her horribly burned and scarred. The World War II prisoner of war who met and forgave the guard who abused and mistreated her in a concentration camp. The American mother who forgave the man who, for, who murdered her own son to the extent that in time she almost became a surrogate mum to the murderer. And they're powerful stories and they remind us that with God's help, we can forgive the most appalling sins against us. And there are times we need to do that. And that's a hard journey and it takes a lot of prayer and sometimes counselling and sometimes prayer ministry. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, who's, in whose power and presence we can do all things, we can forgive even the most horrendous hurts. And I've preached on those things before and I'll preach on them again. But today we're looking at life and community within the church family. And can we be honest here? 99% of the time, when we need to forgive within the church family, it's not because our life has been scarred. It's because our knickers have been got 
in a twist. And I think it's important that we learn to recognise the difference. Sometimes in church, forgiveness means getting over ourselves, taking ourselves a little bit less seriously and moving on. Sometimes we act like we, we need to become a Zen master in forgiveness and really we just need to take a chill. But she offended me. Okay, how long are you going to choose to live there? We've become so good at being offended. We live in a society where being offended is the new epidemic. And I wonder whether we've just got a bit too precious about our own feelings. Sometimes people are going to say things that you don't like. Sometimes people are unintentionally thoughtless and stupid, including me and including you. Sometimes things are not going to go your way. Sometimes people are going to tread on your toes. It's just the way life is. And I'm not excusing people behaving in ways that are rude or unkind. There is no excuse for that. What I'm saying is that if you're still stewing over the rude or unkind thing someone did four years ago, you just might be a bit too easily offended. And I realise that in saying that, I might have just offended one or two people, and I do apologise. Whether it is a big significant thing or a really small offence, God tells us to forgive as the Lord forgave us. And we prayed the Lord's Prayer a few minutes ago, which includes the words, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And if you look it up in Matthew's Gospel, you'll find that what Jesus said immediately after teaching his followers that prayer was, because if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. It's a choice, but make no mistake, it's a choice with a consequence. We need to forgive as the Lord forgave us. You know, if, um, if you get stung by a bee, it injects venom into you, which is extremely painful for a very small thing. And normally, when a, a bee stings you, it leaves the stinger in your skin. And if you look at the stinger really close up through a magnifying glass or something like that, you'll see that there's something like a needle going into your skin. And at the end of the needle, there's a poison sac. And any first aider will tell you that you have to be really careful how you pull the stinger out. Because if you grab that poison sac with your tweezers, and squeeze, you'll make the sting far worse than it originally was. Because you'll squeeze far more venom into what's already a painful wound. You have to grab the stinger underneath the poison sack and draw it out that way. Forgiveness is deciding to pull the stinger out of the wound. It might not take the pain away in an instant, but it removes the poison. It's a choice. You can also choose to hold on to the hurt and to return to it over and over again. And every time you do, it's like you give the poison sack another squeeze and inject a little bit more venom into a memory that was perhaps starting to heal. And you can do that on and on and on. You know, I've, I've spoken to people who have reached the end of their life still squeezing poison sacks from years previously. Or you can choose to draw the stinger out with God's help and release that person and let the poison go. You can choose to forgive as the Lord 
forgave you. Let's pray together as we finish. And as we take a couple of minutes to pray together and to respond to anything that God's been saying to you, let's just ask the Holy Spirit to come and to visit us. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are present with us in our homes or anywhere else that we're watching this service, in our bedrooms, our living rooms, at the kitchen table, wherever we are, you are there with us. And Holy Spirit, we want to ask you to fill us and to flow through us and to move. Lord, some of us have been holding on to offences that people have, things that people have said and done within church that we have taken offence at. And we want to release those things to you. Lord, would you release us from our pride that sometimes makes it so difficult to let go and to forgive? Lord, would you teach us not to take things personally that aren't necessarily meant personally? But we come to you with those small things that we've held on to and we choose to forgive and we ask for your help holy spirit to enable us to go through with that to move on to let go to think differently about those th those people and to release them but father for some of us we are coming to you with big significant things that are far harder to forgive. For some of us, we're coming to you with pain that we have held and carried for years. For some of us, we're coming to you with situations that with hand on heart, we can only say, I'm not sure whether I can forgive this. Lord, some of us are carrying such huge pain and Holy Spirit, we need your help. And for some of us, we're ready to say, God, please enable me to forgive that person and release that thing now. And Holy Spirit, I want to pray for a touch of your presence and your power for each person who, for whom that's what they're wanting to say right now that you would give them the ability to forgive and to forgive again tomorrow when that thing comes back and to forgive again the day after until, until that recurring need to release it has started to fade. And Father, for some of us, we're holding things before you and if we're honest, we're saying, I don't think I can. I want to, but I don't think I can. Or maybe even I don't want to. And Father, for some of us, what we need to say to you is, please help us to get to the point where we truly want to forgive. Even if it's beyond our power, even if it's beyond our ability, please get us to the point where we can say, Father, I want to, if you will make it possible. Lord, thank you that when we forgive, it sets us free. Thank you that when we forgive, it takes us further into the fullness of life that you want us to have. And thank you that we have received far, far more forgiveness than we will ever be able to offer other people. And we've received that from you. So Lord, today we come to you with those, in some cases, extremely painful, difficult situations. And we say, give us the grace, give us the power by your Holy Spirit to be able to forgive. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
and as we 